Welcome back to the TLC Perfect Pond channel. It's been a little while since we've been able to post a video, but we're making some progress on this restoration pond and should have lots of good videos coming up here. If you haven't seen all the previous videos or we've been redoing this pond, if you look in the description below, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll put links to those so you can check those out. But basically what we have here is a seven to eight acre pond. We drained it completely, got all the fish out of here. One of the big issues was it was too shallow in some parts. The bank wasn't steep enough, so there's a lot of vegetation that we were always constantly fighting here. So after we drained the pond, collected all the fish that were in it, we had some heavy equipment guys come in here, dig it out a little bit in those shallow parts and steepen up the bank so we don't have to fight the vegetation as much. We also did a video showing us adding some artificial structure in a couple spots on the pond we also pushed down a couple trees along the pond bank and put those in there to provide some additional structure or habitat as well so as you can see the pond is almost full probably got about another foot or so to go so it's been filling up the last couple weeks way on the other side of me there there's a pipe running into the pond that's so being fed from a well way back there in those woods been filling up pretty nicely like i said the last couple of weeks still got a little ways to go here now due to some things beyond our control because the pump on the well back there needed repair some of these trees that we added for structure or cover have floated so we made sure not to add dead wood in here we put live wood so these trees were freshly pushed down when they were put in here but there was a bit of a delay as far as the trees sitting in here to when we were able to get the water pumped in here so some of them have floated there we might have to get those out at some point a good bit of it has remained sunk so that's good but we've got a few floaters out there so today what we're going to be doing is starting to stock this pond so i know we're going to be putting some bluegill in here we're also going to be putting some carp in here as well the guys are on the way with the stock wagon and we'll be putting a lot of fish in here in just a little bit now one of the first things I noticed when I got out here this morning is just how clear the water is here. Now some people may find that that's something they want in a pond, but for what we do, we don't want to see a clear pond like this. So when water clarity in a pond is too high, you're almost always going to have vegetation issues. So when the water is real clear, that means light can penetrate deeper into the water column. That vegetation on the bottom is going to thrive from that light and when you have a clear pond you're almost always going to see a lot of subsurface vegetation in there you can also see a decent amount of surface vegetation now in addition to the water clarity causing a lot of vegetation issues clear water also means that the pond is not very fertile now we've talked about this on several of our past videos but a simplified version of the pond food chain goes plankton bluegill and then largemouth bass now obviously there's a lot more working pieces and components to what's going on in an actual pond food web but those are the three pieces or components that we can actually control from a pond management perspective the plankton the bluegill and the largemouth bass so we like to see ponds that are fertile and that means the water clarity isn't near what it is in this pond here. We like to see water clarity only down to a few feet or so, certainly not all the way to the bottom like it is in this pond right now. So if we've got a fertile pond, we've got kind of that green film on top, sometimes it looks kind of brown on top, that tells us there's a lot of plankton in that pond. Those plankton are gonna shade the pond, help reduce the amount of subsurface vegetation we get. Those plankton are also gonna feed the bluegill which kind of cascades up that pond food chain. So after we stock this pond today, we're actually going to come in here in a couple of weeks and fertilize this pond, reduce that water clarity, and really get those plankton populations booming so we can help out that pond food chain we talked about. Now, this property here does have a lot of cows on it, so it is going to get some manure runoff at some point. And we might not have to continually fertilize this pond like we do some of our other ponds we manage but we do want to give it that initial fertilization get that plankton population booming and we'll just have to see if the cow manure runoff keeps it fertile from there on out 
Now before the fish get here in a minute, let's talk about why we're stocking what we're stocking. So I mentioned we're stocking bluegill and we're also putting some carp in here. So for this pond and most of the ponds we manage, the primary goal is to create a trophy largemouth bass fishery. Now, if we have some nice sized sunfish in there that you can catch and eat, that's always a bonus as well. And we gotta have those sunfish to feed the bass. So if we wanna grow big, healthy, fat, largemouth bass, we gotta have plenty for them to eat. And that's why bluegill is our preferred forage to have in a pond for largemouth bass. The bass prefer those bluegill over anything else. And that's why we wanna give them plenty of bluegill to eat. The other great reason to use bluegill as the main bass forage species in a pond is because they spawn multiple times a year. Sunfish species like shellcracker only spawn once a year. But bluegill, depending on how much spawning habitat we have in the pond, can spawn three or more times a year. So having those multiple spawning events per year is gonna ensure that we're getting a lot of new individuals added to the sunfish population and we're gonna keep a constant supply of prey for the bass in the pond. Now this is not a new pond, but we're basically treating it as a new pond because we drained it, we took out all the fish, dug it out and then filled it back up. So it's almost like we just built a new pond here. In a new pond, for stocking bluegill, we recommend 500 fish per acre in an unfertilized pond and then 1,000 fish per acre in a fertilized pond. And that goes back to that pond food web. If you've got plenty of plankton there, you can hold more bluegill in that pond. So because we're gonna fertilize this pond in a couple weeks, we're stocking 7,000 bluegill today. I believe these fish are around two to three inches long. So 7,000, 1,000 per acre in this approximately seven acre pond. Now, even though the water's clear, the vegetation isn't necessarily booming in this pond yet by any means, but we wanna make sure that it doesn't. So we're gonna fertilize like we said earlier, but we're also gonna add some carp. Now, usually when we're stocking carp, we'll put in larger fish than what we're gonna be putting in today. That's because if you've got an existing bass population in a pond, they will eat those small carp when you introduce them. In this case, we removed all the bass when we drained this pond, so there's no predators in it right now. We can get away with stocking some smaller carp. And as far as the carp density goes, we're going for 10 per acre here, so we're gonna be stocking 70 of those smaller carp in this pond. To make sure this vegetation doesn't get out of control, kind of keep it to a minimal level so we don't have to come in here and spray this pond. By the time we get the fertility up with the carp, we should be good and shouldn't really have to fight vegetation much at all now that we've got the pond dug out. All right, we got the fish truck here. Got the pipe run out in the water here. About to get some fish stopped. Got about two, two, seven, three hundred there. This in case got a few beat up, we always put them. We're just having to run through that grate and get them down the side. Is this a new pond starting over or just? Yeah, yeah, we got okay. starting over. Okay. All right, so that was fast there. Really, really fast. They got a few floaters out there. It looks like most of them actually made it in just fine. They had the carp and the bluegill mixed together in one tank there. Now, ideally, we would have liked to have stocked some larger bluegill, some that were a little closer to reproductive age but we weren't able to get our hands on any larger ones and so we got what we got with these smaller ones we put in here we'll feed them really well try to get them growing and spawning as fast as we can one more thing i should have mentioned earlier when you're stocking a new pond like this you always want to stock your bluegill at least one season if not a whole year before you stock the bass in there. Give that bluegill population or that sunfish population time to establish before you introduce any predators. If we put predators in here right now, they're just gonna eat all those tiny bluegill we just introduced. So gotta give the prey populations time to establish, then introduce predators. So I hope you enjoyed the update video today on this pond restoration project, kind of explaining 
why we're doing things the way we're doing around here and on our next video we're going to be showing us setting up some feeders and talking about the right kind of fish food to feed these bluegill we just put in here so we can get those things growing as fast as we can if you're in the south georgia or north florida area and could benefit from our pond management services you can go to our website tlcperfectpond.com there's a contact us form there fill that out we'll get back with you and see how we can help make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next time right here on the tlc perfect pond channel